Greetings, my esteemed audience. I am checking in from good old Spain. I am checking in from the very heart of Iberia. So you can see me there. I am looking down this epic view and in the distance you can actually see Madrid. So in this video I will share some observations and thoughts from Spain. But first we have a message from the sponsor of the video. I'm sponsoring myself as is my custom. So we have a new release. The shoulder bag of the ages extra large so it's an aesthetically pleasing shoulder bag you can use for a wide variety of purposes so you can check it out first link in the description box below the greatest organic cotton underwear are also back in stock so do get yourself a three pack of those and you will be better for it and now we're going back to the video at hand there you see me i'm meditating i'm meditating upon the wisdom, the esoteric wisdom of the Visigoths. So these parts are also old Visigothic domains. We will return to the topic in just a bit. Now also a shout out to my lovely and beautiful wife, also an artistic soul. So the nice footage, you see, it's uh, her work. Same thing with many of the nice photos of me you might see. So shout out to her. And now you see me here, I'm climbing this little rock formation i simply have to do it since it's looked so inviting and i've played so much assassin's creed over in my days so i i simply have to do it and i have to pose as well i have something called physique autism which means that i have to pose i can't help myself so you will have to endure my narcissistic flexing in my videos so anyway whenever i see stuff like this i am um, yeah I simply have to do it there as well i have to do some dips to get some extra pump so i look juicy in uh, these video sequences so always good to get some extra pumps and there we have a celt iberian hut or i title it a witch's hut so quite a nice addition in the landscape and there you see the beautiful vistas to be enjoyed up here in the mountain ranges north of madrid very inspiring for sensitive poets you can also spot some eagles up here then we also stumbled upon a fountain and it was supremely enjoyable to splash some water in the face and drink from it on a hot day now moving on to the glorious city of segovia i hope you enjoyed the newsletter we sent out from segovia the newsletter can be subscribed to at legiogloria.com i check in every once in a while with some some nice stories and of course updates regarding new releases and the like so segovia as i noted in the newsletter was first in Celt Iberian hands, as was all of the Iberian Peninsula. And then came the Romans to conquer it all. And they built this absolutely magnificent aqueduct that we're admiring. And you see, I am touching it there as well to imbue myself with their power and thumos. Then, of course, as Rome fell, the Western Roman Empire, and it was conquered by the glorious Visigoths, and the city was in gothic hands until alas the great misfortune that befell iberia the muslim conquest of almost all of the peninsula so the city languished under moorish rule for a few centuries until it was reconquered by the valiant forces of alfonso the sixth so there you can see a sensitive videographer trying to get some nice shots of the aqueduct and you see quite a few birds they've also come to admire its grandeur so the aqueduct definitely worth a visit if you're in this part of spain segovia it also has a few other nice sites this beautiful cathedral to name one it has some gothic elements and when we say gothic we're not referring to the germanic tribe of the goths so the visigoths but it's rather an architectural style popular in during the middle ages so you can see some gargoyles there i tried to get them in the shot there and that's a typical element you see in uh, gothic cathedrals and there of course you see the interior of the cathedral and as you know i am not a christian but i can still appreciate the great beauty on display in uh, these medieval cathedrals Next stop we have the Alcazar of Segovia, 
the castle of Segovia. So it's a medieval fortress that has hosted many a Spanish king and queen over the centuries. And when I say Spanish, it's worth keeping in mind that Spain wasn't a unified country for most of the Middle Ages that came later. And that's why you still have some separatism going on in Spain today in Basque country and in Catalonia. So when I say a Spanish king, it could be a Castilian king, for example. Speaking of which, there before you, you see portraits of kings that ruled during the Middle Ages, and many of them were, of course, involved in the Reconquista. So if you feel blackpilled about the situation in Europe at the moment, then I encourage you to take inspiration from the events of the Reconquista. So no matter how dark it might look, you can always come back stronger. You can always come back with a reconquest to take back your land. On the same topic, it might be worth pointing out that the Visigothic Kingdom, we could say that it lasted from the early 400s to the early 700s. But to keep in mind also is that the kings and nobility of medieval Spain, they viewed themselves as the successors of the Visigoths. So a more reasonable view of it would be to say that the Visigothic spirit, it didn't disappear, but it re-emerged during the Reconquista. And of course, the Visigothic component is still present in Spain today. You can see it in certain names, for example. And now we need to fast forward time to the age of Napoleon. This is a monument erected in honor of two Spanish artillery officers who fought against the French during the uprising of 1808. Next stop is the city of Burgos, where we went to pay homage to the spirit of El Cid, El Cid Campeador, who has been a hero of mine since my boyhood. When I was a sensitive young boy, I encountered his legend in Age of Empires 2, and of course it made a great impression on me. So his story, the story of a man of power and adventure, a man of Thumos, it can definitely inspire us in this day and age. Something else we can learn from the story of El Cid is that the Reconquista was not black and white, it was more a case of total war. So I've said it before, I'll say it again, you should model your worldview on total war games so you understand the complexity of geopolitics so most conflicts they are not black and white you have many different factions so you had in medieval spain in early medieval spain you had different factions on the muslim side and you had different factions on the christian side and sometimes they could ally with each other and some other times they would fight against each other and i'm only speculating now but i would guess at least that the reconquista would have concluded a lot sooner if the christian kingdoms if they didn't spend so much time and energy in fighting so there are some insights you can bear with you in this day and age as well so stop the infighting on x i implore you my dear allies now that all being said here we have the majestic cathedral of burgos and in here as you will see in a bit here lies the great el cid and his wife jimena so a lot of beauty to be found in this cathedral as well definitely worth visiting if you have if you are in these parts of spain and here we see the resting place of el cid so you can go there you can pray to his spirit you can pray that he imbues you with thumos to give you energy in your own quest that is at least what i did next stop euskadi basque country and now you have two parts of basque country you have a spanish part and a french part we spent most of our time in the spanish part especially san sebastian which is a very beautiful city indeed and of course the mighty atlantic contributes to said beauty as well so basque country it has a quite different feel than uh, Castile, the rest of Spain, I suppose. And as I mentioned, they do have a separatist movement here. I'm not going to go into detail here. I have no patience, no interest whatsoever for any political question aside from re-migration. Now, Basque country, it is said to have a Celtic culture, but uh, to keep in mind here is that the term Celtic can be quite confusing. So perhaps you think of Ireland when you hear the term Celtic, but comparing the two, the Basques and the Irish, they are nothing alike. They don't look like each other and they don't act like each other. So it can be quite misleading to um, label them both 
as being of the same culture. But of course, similarities exist and can be interesting to delve deeper into. Anyway, a note on the landscape as well. So of course, it looks and feels like the Atlantic, but it also has a touch of the Mediterranean as well. So it's a quite special feel to it. And as I said, it's a supremely beautiful place. It doesn't quite have the magic like a place such as Ireland would have, for example, or part of Sweden or Germany. So it doesn't quite have the magic, but it's still a beautiful place. So it's well worth a visit, San Sebastian and the rest of the Basque country. We also visited the French part of the Basque country, so Bayonne, and there we stumbled upon a mighty cathedral. So one of the nicest, most beautiful cathedrals I've been in. The interior was, um, yeah, was something else. So I suppose you saw my newsletter from there as well and saw the pictures on social media. So I will check in from some more places here in good old Spain. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. Do check out all the links in the description box below. XOXO, boom.